Hello, and welcome to the session on creating graphs with error bars inside of Excel. Today we're going to create some graphs inside of Excel and then see if we can generate an indication of dispersion on those graphs by adding some error bars. In this particular case, we're going to take a factorial design study. Factorial design has more than one independent variable and we're going to make up some data along two different dimensions. We'll assume that we have some average data for females and for males, and we'll assume that we're taking these data across four different years of college, when the student is in their first, second, third, and fourth years. So we'll create some averages, and then we'll add some standard deviations as an indication of dispersion. We'll graph that information, and we'll see how we might add error bars and some other bells and whistles to our graph. So let's begin just by clicking this upper area and recognizing that we can put in some data that might correspond to female and male averages. Now, we don't even need to know what exactly these averages represent, but we're just going to create some numbers to get the graphs going. I'm going to use a random number generator inside of Excel. We'll say that we want a random number between, say, 10 and 20. And I'm doing this by clicking in equals rand between, I open a left paren, and I put the bottom of the range that's desired, which would be 10, and the upper range, which is 20, and I'll close that off with the right paren. So again, that syntax is equals rand between, left parenthesis, 10, comma, 20, right parenthesis. And when I hit enter, I get a randomly generated number. If I hold down the F9 key on my keyboard, and I tap it, you'll see that that number changes. With each tap, I get a newly generated random number in the range between 10 and 20. What I can do now is expand the number of data points by grabbing in the lower right-hand corner of this Excel spreadsheet, clicking on that and dragging down, and now I've copied that same syntax into each of these four cells. So I now have some different means for the female category, first, second, third, and fourth years of college. And I can hold down my F9 key, and I'm generating brand new numbers each time. I might take those same four items, simply highlighting over them with my cursor, and dragging them over to the right. And one more time now, I've got another set of data that has equals rand between, and I can now hold down my F9 key, and I'm getting lots of new numbers. Now those are the averages, and they're ranging between 10 and 20. Okay. What I can do is add some dispersion. I can give an indication of the average extent to which a given score is departing from those means, and one could actually compute the standard deviation, but we're not going to do that in this session. We're just going to create some dummy data that might be what we would expect to find in a typical data set. So here I'm going to use a random number generation routine that's slightly different. This one will be called equals rand, R-A-N-D. I'll open a left parenthesis and immediately a right parenthesis and I'll hit enter. And that gives me a random number between 0 and 1 in a uniform or flat probability distribution. From here, I can, just like before, drag the information that I have down. So I now have a bunch of random numbers between 0 and 1. I can highlight those using my cursor. I can drag those over, and I now have a total of four averages up here, and this is reflecting the intersection of these two variables, gender and college year. And then I have some dummy data corresponding to the hypothetical dispersion or standard deviation of those scores, and these typically range between 0 and 1. As I hold down my F9 key, I'm generating brand new data sets that we might choose to graph now. So with these data in hand, why don't we go ahead and see if we can create some graphs. I'm going to highlight the means or the averages that we'd like to graph, and I'll begin by simply dragging over those. I'll click on the Insert button way up top here, okay? and then I'm going to insert, in this particular case, a column graph. I'll click on that. There's a drop-down menu. I'll take the very first 2D column. I'll click on that, and we get a nicely sized graph right here. And you can see that Excel will automatically grab some column titles for us and automatically grab some of the row titles and so forth. Okay? And we can then begin working on this graph. We can add a lot of things. We can add some chart titles and we can add some axis labels. Why don't we begin with that? 
The way that starts is by clicking inside of the graph itself, and then clicking on Layout. Layout is up here, way up top on the menu list, a little bit to the right side of the full range of menus, and we'll go to something like Chart Title, and we'll add a chart title maybe above the chart, and I'll call this very simply Dummy Data. So now in our 4 by 2 design, we have four levels of class year, two levels of gender, we've generated some dummy data. I can hold down my F9 key again, and you'll notice that the data are varying randomly here. We'll add just a little bit more information to our axes on the ordinate or the y-axis. I'll grab, again from the layout menu, a different sub-menu. In this case, I'll go to axis titles, and I'll go to the primary vertical axis. From here, I'll take the rotated title option. So that was layout, axis titles, primary vertical axis title, a rotated title, and I'll click on that. Then a small box opens here, and I can type in that box something like, we'll call it mean score. Okay. And I'll click on enter, and mean score will now populate. And one more time, I can hold down the F9 key, and we're getting some variability of each press of the 9 key, the F9 key, on mean score. I'll now add a axis label for my abscissa, or horizontal axis. And I'll go over to here again with layout, axes titles, primary horizontal axis, title below the axis, and I might call this now class year. I'll hit enter, and now we have in this graph mean score plotted as a function of class year with the participant's gender as the parameter. And these, of course, are simply dummy data. So when I hold down my F9 key, and I can just hold it down consistently, and this will now go crazy as I hold this down, I've got lots of means varying with each press of the F9 key. So, so far we've plotted some indication of mean or average, and that's an indicator of, 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 of central tendency. We could use other indicators of central tendency. We could have used a mode. We could have used a median. Here we're using the average. We also want to add now to this some error bars that will give us some indication of the dispersion of the data sets. And we could, with a real data set, compute the actual dispersion here, but just for the moment I'm using dummy values for the standard deviations. And this gets just a little bit tricky. Adding error bars to Excel graphs is just a little bit tricky, so let's take this a little bit slowly and watch very carefully, please. I'm going to click on the graph one more time, and I'm going to click on Layout, just like I had before. On the far right-hand side, there's an Error Bars option, and I'm going to click on that. And you see many different submenus, but the one that we want is the one all the way on the bottom. It says More Error Bars Options. I'll click on that, and... Oops, excuse me. I'll do that one more time. Before I do that, though, sorry, I'll need to click over here on one of our data series. I'll need to click maybe on the red series or on the blue series. In this particular graph, the females are shown in blue, so I'll click on that. We'll do it one more time. Layout, error bars, all the way down, more error bars. Okay, and I'm now receiving some kind of uh, menu option. Lots of different possibilities here. We want to go all the way down to custom, and having selected custom, we now have the chance to click specify value. And that will allow us to put in this range of values here for our blue data series, which corresponds to our female averages. So I'm going to click on specify value. I'll drop that down to right about here. You can move these menus around so that they're uh, in convenient places for you. And there are some default values that we can now simply highlight with our cursor and eliminate by clicking on the delete key or maybe the backspace key after they're highlighted. Okay? And we can now insert the positive or upward portion of that error bar or the negative or downward portion of that error bar. In each case, we want to take this range of values. So I'm highlighting now over the standard deviations for the females, and I want to use that data series to go up. What's nice is that in principle, I could go down by a different data series although it doesn't usually make sense to do that, but in principle, Excel gives you that flexibility. I'm now in the negative error bar range. I'll highlight over that, okay? and I'll click on OK, okay? and I'll click on Close for this earlier menu, <clears throat> and you can see that we now have error bars, these small black indicators of dispersion, and when I hit the F9 key, both the means change and the error bars change. 
that one more time because that's a little bit tricky. And one of the things that you might want to remind yourself of is before you begin adding error bars, you always would like to highlight the data series of interest. In this particular case, the data series of interest is the male series. And the males are shown in this graph in this orangey red type of color. We already have the means. We want to grab now the corresponding standard deviations from over here. So I'm going to click on that orange series. Having done that and having highlighted that, I'll now go back to layout. This is what we did a moment ago. I'll go to error bars. I'll go to more error bar options. I'll get this menu. Okay. And remember that there are many options here. We want to customize our error bars and specify the exact values. Here we are again with our submenu. We get the default values that we can highlight on the positive side and eliminate. We can highlight down here on the negative side and eliminate. And now I can highlight over the range of values that I would like to have inserted as my standard deviation values. I highlight it over those. I'll click into the positive area. I highlight over those. I click OK. I click Close. Okay. And now you can see both the blue and the orangey red data series each have their own error bars. And with every press of the F9 key, I get some variability both in my means and also in my standard deviations. So we can hold down the data series and away we go. One last thing that we might do. When I stopped generating random numbers, it turned out that this particular y-axis is spaced at units of 5. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. I can change that. I can make that units of sevens or sixes or whatever numbers I choose to use. So I'm going to click this one more time. And I'm going to click on that y-axis. And I'll go to the layout. And I'll go to the axes. Okay, so I'm now going to maybe change the spacing that I have here, or I could lock it in permanently on these fives. So let's go now to layout and axes, primary vertical axis. I'll go to more primary vertical axis options. Okay, and over here I get a new submenu. And one of the nice things is I can specify my bottom value. I'll leave that at zero. I can specify my top value. It's defaulting for the moment to 25. Why don't I make it just for fun, why don't I go to something like 50, okay? And then I can make my major unit spacing any number that I desire. Momentarily, it's defaulted to having units of 5 as a spacing, but I can instead change that to a 10. I can close that, and now you can see that no matter what happens in my random number generation, I have a relatively stable y-axis or ordinate. Okay. okay, and then we'll do that one more time. We'll bring that back down into range. And we'll go from here, where I'm highlighting the graph, to Layout. And the Layout menu gives us many, many different options for all the bells and whistles that we might need. I'm going to go to, once again, Axes, and then Vertical Axis. And I'll take the very bottom ax uh, option of More Primary Vertical Axis Options. Okay. And I'll now reset this from a range that goes from 0 to 50 to something that goes more like 0 to 25, as I had a moment ago. And I might fix the step size to be a unit of 5. I'll close that, and there we are one more time. We hold down the F9 key, and we've got it. So I would encourage you to practice these steps. Create your own dummy data sets. You might create a different dimensionality. Here I have a factorial 4 by 2 design. But you can flip this around any way that you like. Good luck.